To prepare for an injection, your first stop will always be the injector head, so let's begin there. The manual knob at the back of the injector head is used to expel air or check for blood return. This is the piston release lever. It allows the plunger to be disengaged from the piston. The armed indicator light shows the status of the injection. When the injector is armed, the indicator light will flash. The light is steady while the injection is in progress and goes out once the injection is completed. The forward and reverse load strip is used to move the piston forward or backward at a variable speed. Use this to load the syringe. The mechanical stop set position is verified by LEDs on the injector head. The syringe size indicator shows the size of syringe that is selected. The volume remaining in the syringe is automatically displayed. The blue figure eight shaped metal fixture on the front end of the injector head is called a turret. The turret is built to hold two syringes at one time, either one 60 milliliter and one 150 milliliter syringe, two 150 milliliter syringes, or two 200 milliliter syringes. This allows you to easily match the right amount of contrast with the procedure you are performing. The pressure jackets are made of high strength, impact resistant plastic materials designed to withstand many pressure cycles. The hex clip at the bottom of the pressure jacket holds the syringe in place and prevents it from falling out. Also notice the white fluy dots on the side of the pressure jacket. These employ an optical illusion to display the presence of gross air. When viewed through the fluid, fluid dot indicators will appear larger and rounded. Viewed through air, the indicators appear small and narrow. Inspect the pressure jacket to ensure it is not cracked, crazed, scratched, or opaque, and verify the hex clip is in place. Insert the pressure jacket into the rear of the turret, shoulder first, aligning the turret screws with the cutouts in the pressure jacket flange. Rotate the pressure jacket until it snaps into place. If the pressure jacket appears loose, tighten the screws until they touch the flange of the pressure jacket. The screws should be snug, but do not over tighten. Notice the small plastic extension on the tip of the syringe. This is an alignment key to help you position the syringe correctly in the pressure jacket. Additionally, the syringe flange is designed with one flat side for easier loading. To insert the alignment key correctly, position the flat side of the rear flange facing up towards you. Now, slide the syringe into place. Do not touch the tip or the inside of the syringe. Rotate the turret one half turn to place the empty syringe in front of the plunger and engage the feet of the plunger onto the piston. One operator should fill the syringe and arm the injector. If an operator change must occur, the second operator must verify that the syringe was properly filled and air has been purged from the syringe and fluid path. If you have not already done so, tilt the injector head upwards. Extend the plunger all the way. First, press the Enable button, then, within five seconds, depress the forward load arrow. You can vary the speed by pressing further forward or backward on the arrow load strip. Attach a sterile loading device, a quick fill tube or connector tubing, etc., to the tip of the syringe. Insert the long leg of the quick fill tube into the bottle of contrast. Press the enable button and then press the reverse arrows on the forward reverse load strip. Slowly withdraw about five milliliter of fluid. Then use the forward arrow to slowly advance the plunger again. This will expel air that is trapped in the syringe neck. Now press and hold the reverse arrow until the desired amount is loaded or the bottle is empty. To avoid contrast drips, keep the long end of the quick fill tube in the contrast bottle when removing the other end from the tip of the syringe. Dislodge air bubbles from the syringe by gently tapping on the pressure jacket with the heel of your hand. 
hitting the syringe or pressure jacket with any tools may cause equipment damage. We are now ready to attach the high pressure connector tubing. The MedRad Mark V Provis can be directly connected to a catheter or to a Bayer high pressure connector tube that is then connected to the catheter. Move the plunger slowly forward by turning the manual control knob to push out any remaining air. Do not connect a patient to the injector until all trapped air has been cleared from the syringe, high pressure connector tubing, and catheter. For more information on connecting to a catheter, refer to the MedRad Mark V Provis Operation Manual. Loaded syringes that are stored can promote bacterial growth. MedRad Mark V Provis syringes are designed to be filled just prior to the procedure. Discard any unused loaded syringes. Thank you for